presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. The Pharisees and the the scribes questioned him. Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? Jesus responded, Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites? As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition. He went on to say, how well you have set aside the commandment of God in order to uphold your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever curses father or mother shall die. Yet you say, if someone says to father or mother, any support you might have had from me is korban, meaning dedicated to God, you allow him to do nothing more for his father or mother. You nullify the word of God in favor of your tradition, that you have handed on, and you do many such things. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is yet another of one of many examples of Jesus butting heads with the Pharisees and the scribes. And the inciting incident for this is that Jesus' disciples are not washing their hands. They're not following the letter of the law. And so they are observing Jesus. They're looking for something to be able to criticize him, and they find it. And they bring that forward, and they say, why are your disciples not following our tradition? Jesus goes on and makes a distinction between oral tradition and the written laws. The Pharisees were strict observers of the law. They took the prescriptions that were to be applied to the priests and applied them to the ordinary layperson. In other words, they were raising the bar Now, their intention initially was good. They wanted to call the people to great holiness. But in doing that, they made the criteria the external observance rather than the internal cleansing of the hearts. Jesus said, cleanse your heart, not not, not simply what can be observed externally. And then he goes on to point out their own hypocrisy where they're interpreting the law in their favor and judging everyone else. 
I think you would agree that in your experience, as in mine, some of the most self-righteous people can be our fellow Christians. Perhaps we can observe that in ourselves as well, that we're hard on judging other people and we cut ourselves a lot of slack. I remember there's a story I've told several times. It's the most dramatic example I can think of this. A number of years ago, there was a woman at a parish that I was working at, not St. Anne's, who was scrupulous observer of the details of Catholic liturgy. And she was kind of one of those liturgical Nazis, and she was observing all of the priests, and then if they didn't follow the letter of the law, she would report them to the pastor, and if the pastor didn't do anything, she would report them to the bishop. She was a regular in her letters. And there was one priest at this parish who at the offertory was not washing his hands. He skipped the offertory pretty regularly. And this drove her crazy. She reported it to the pastor. She reported it to the auxiliary bishop. She wrote letters to the cardinal. He is not following the letter of the law. He's violating the sacred liturgy. She got all in a tizzy about this. Well, then she fell in love with a man who was divorced and not annulled. And she carried on an affair with him for some time and then ran off and got married by the justice of the peace. She was micro-focused on minutiae and then when it come to, came to something rather serious, carried on a rather scandalous affair, and I mean, this was public, public knowledge, and then married, got married outside the church. When that marriage fell apart, thank goodness, she experienced a conversion of heart, repented and came back to the church, a much humbler, servant of God. I mentioned that, that example because I, I suspect we all have examples that apply within our own hearts that we focus on something minor and we miss the big picture. You know, we strain a gnat and we swallow the elephant. Now, depending on whether we swing left or whether we swing right, we can become focused on those, if we're more conservative, on those damn liberals, the Democrats, Biden, the gays, the illegals. If we're more liberal, the damn conservatives, the Republicans, the Trumpsters, the self-serving capitalists. Depending on what our perspective is, it's so easy to focus on the other group and see and magnify all of their shortcomings. Reminds me of the story of there was a young man who was backpacking and traveling and he was entering a town and there was a person who was coming out of the town who had an angry look on his face and the young man said, what kind of people live in this town? He said, oh, people in that town, they're self-serving, they're judgmental, they're harsh, they're selfish. You don't want to associate with the people from that town. And the young man said, well, thanks for the warning. A few minutes later, somebody else came from that town, and the young man said, what kind of people are in that town? The guy said, oh, that town. They're the most generous, kind, thoughtful, helpful people you can ever find. He said, well, thank you. Same town. Two different experiences. If you're looking to find fault with the people, you're going to find fault with the people. If you're looking to find goodness and kindness, you're going to be able to find that. Depending on what your lens is and what you're looking for, you're going to screen out so much that is good or so much that is bad and focus on a self-fulfilling prophecy. This past week, Pope Francis, just 
actually a couple days ago, released a video message which was viewed by the attendees of the 2024 award ceremony of the Zaid Award for Human Fraternity in Abu Dhabi. You probably didn't hear about this unless you scour the Vatican website, which I do from time to time. This year's award marked the fifth anniversary of the Document on Human Fraternity for World Peace and Living Together. It was released around the same time that Pope Francis released his last encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, on human fraternity. In that encyclical and in that document on human fraternity, Pope Francis called us to recognize people of different religions who are cooperating with us for world peace, for the human good. He signed that document in 2019 with Sheikh Ahmad Al-Tayyib, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar. Now, if you just want to look at the Muslims and say, Muslims, they're not Christians. What do we want to have anything to do with them? Just recognize, if, if, if they would recognize Jesus as Lord, as Jesus as, as Savior, and come along and become Christians, then they would be good people. But let's write them off. Well, that's certainly not Pope Francis' attitude, nor is it the message in Fratelli Tutti. He said, yeah, there are a lot of things that we disagree with Muslims about. And are there extremists? Yes, absolutely. And, and violence in the name of religion, no matter what the religion is, is to be condemned. But can we find things that we can cooperate together on? That's the heart of his message. And five years ago, the Pope, in conjunction with the Grand Imam and other world leaders, initiated these awards. And there's a $1 million cash prize that comes for it for, for encouraging world peace and living together in peace. The award winners this year were Sister Nellie Leon Correa, a Chilean nun who works with women prisoners. And just an extraordinary story, as I was doing a little research on her, in the midst of the COVID lockdown, because she was, she's been working with women prisoners for many years, because of the lockdown, she wasn't going to be allowed to go into the prisoner, prison. And so she chose to live in the prison with the prisoners so she could minister to them for a year and a half in the midst of the COVID lockdown. Just extraordinary. Dr. Sir Magdi Yaqub, an Egyptian cardiothoracic surgeon, who set up, he's a wealthy man, set up a private foundation that would allow for surgeries for poor people who couldn't afford them. Not only in Egypt, but throughout the world. Here's a wealthy guy who uses his talents and recognizes there are a lot of people who can't afford it and not just donates his own services, sets up a foundation so that other, phys other physicians can care for the poor. And then two leading Indonesian Islamic organizations whose name I won't even <laughs> attempt to pronounce were singled out for their work in moderation, education, and health services in Indonesia, which is the largest Muslim country in the world. Their organization serves hundreds of millions of people in education and healthcare services. Pope Francis said, I offer them my thanks and I trust that their example will encourage others to undertake initiatives arising from fruitful cooperation between people of different religions that serve our whole human family, respect the dignity of each, and promote the values proposed by the document on human fraternity. Extraordinary examples 
of people reaching across religious lines to promote what is, what is genuinely for the common good. Let me just close in reminding you that in that document on Fratelli Tutti, our last encyclical written by Pope Francis, the heart of that is a reflection on Jesus' parable on the Good Samaritan. You remember that the hero of the Good Samaritan of that parable, unfortunately, was not the priest, nor was it a dedicated layperson. It was an outsider. It wasn't a Jew who saw a person in need and did the right thing. Let's pray that our lenses may be purified, that our own hearts would be clean, and that we would become the kind of person that Jesus wants us to be, that looks around at all people and sees them as our brothers and sisters. Amen.